Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a new 30 day green smoothie challenge. So it's been a couple years since my last challenge and I decided that it was high time to reorganize some things, get some new recipes going and just mix it up and do something new. And so for the last six months, I've been working on something called the 30 day green smoothie challenge for busy people. And as you can probably tell from the title, you're gonna get a 30 day green smoothie challenge that is faster. So if you're somebody that has a very busy life, you know, not a lot of time for chopping, preparing stuff and cleanup, stick around because this challenge just might be for you. Just like last time, this smoothie challenge is paired with an ebook that has the same title, it bears the same name, 30 day green smoothie challenge for busy people. This book is available on my website, sergeybutenko.com. And the reason I publish both video and ebook is because, you know, people have different learning styles and some people are more visual. They like to see things and follow along that way. For those people, a video is probably gonna be more beneficial. I'm a visual learner, so I gotta represent. And then there's also people that are more analytical or maybe just people that at times want to be more analytical. And for those folks, it's really helpful to have a book where you can easily skip through stuff, you know, go back and reread certain chapters. Maybe you want to see where Sergey gets some crazy information and see a reference and all of that is in here. And I should mention that this is a physical copy that I printed off for myself. So this is the ebook printed, which you can do, and then it will never run out of batteries. Or you could download your ebook straight to a device, a phone, a tablet, a computer, and then you'll always have access to the shopping lists, to the recipes, to all the you know frequently asked questions, anything you want. And best of all, it goes in your pocket. And so you can have it anywhere where you are. In a nutshell, this green smoothie challenge that I'm talking about here now is exactly the same as the last one, but totally different. <laughs> if that makes any sense whatsoever. What I mean by this is that the content is completely different. We got new recipes, uh, you know, new tips and tricks and everything in between, but the framework is exactly the same. So basically it's still a green smoothie challenge where you drink one quart of smoothie every single day in addition to your normal day-to-day -day diet and routine. And you know, it's, it's a method that's tried and true a lot of people have done it thus far. A lot of people have given me feedback. And so I've saved all the good and tried to improve some of the stuff that may not have been working. We are gonna do this in two parts. Part number one is gonna be the do's and don'ts, the how-to's, the frequently asked questions. We're gonna quickly and efficiently cruise through all of the you know, smoothie making theory. And then in part two, we're gonna jump down in my kitchen and we're actually gonna chop and blend all the smoothies together. I'm gonna throw some more tips and tricks your way. And so it's gonna be simple. If you're somebody that's new to smoothies, I definitely suggest that you stick around for part one because it's gonna be very educational and you're gonna get a lot from it. If you're somebody that's been blending smoothies for a really long time and you don't wanna hear the same information over and over again, I think it's okay for you to skip forward and just go straight to the smoothie making portion, part two. That said, I still think that you're gonna get some stuff out of this if you watch part one, because I've added to it. I've, you know, this is a fluid thing. It's constantly evolving. So without further ado, let's get into part one.
Okay, first on the agenda is what is a green smoothie? Most people, I assume today, know what a green smoothie is, but just in case you don't, let's quickly outline what that means to me. So in my mind, a green smoothie is fresh fruit, fresh greens, and water blended in a blender. This is something that's homemade, it's not bought at the store. And so from here on out, anytime I refer to a green smoothie, I'm simply talking about a drink that you're gonna make yourself in a blender that consists of greens, fruits, and water. The benefits of drinking such smoothies on a regular basis are vast. This is something that I've witnessed firsthand. My journey with smoothies started in 2005 when my mother pioneered the concept. She wrote a book called Green for Life, and ever since that day, I've been helping her do research. We've been doing various retreats all over the world, and so we've been interacting with lots and lots of people, both in person, via email, via phone, and seeing how these smoothies affect people. And the effects are exceptionally positive. Some people lose weight, those that need to lose weight. Other people actually put on weight if they need to gain weight. People's adverse health ailments start going away. This could be as simple as you know, cracked heels, not being cracked anymore. Some people experience uh, you know, their symptoms from chronic disease going away. And I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not gonna make any vast and wild claims here now, but I will say that I've seen some pretty incredible stuff when people incorporate smoothies into their diet regularly. The reason that smoothies work isn't anything fantastical or magical. It's based on the principle that fresh fruits and greens are good for you. They're loaded with nutrition, vitamins, antioxidants, and everything in between. And so when you combine all those things in a vast quantity, you blend them up in a smoothie, and homeostasis becomes restored, our health problems start going away, and we just live happier, healthier lives. So it's nothing, you know, I'm not making any crazy claims, I'm just saying that when you eat more salads, whether they're in solid or liquid form, you're gonna feel better. Now let's talk about what exactly is the 30 Day Green Smoothie Challenge, because no matter how often I say it, people still sometimes get confused. And so the 30 Day Green Smoothie Challenge is very simple. I am gonna encourage you to drink one mason jar of smoothie every single day in addition to your standard typical diet. Here I wanna make an emphasis that this is not a takeaway diet, this is an additive diet. And so by no means am I saying you should stop eating food. Let's get that very clear. So you're gonna drink your jar of smoothie in addition to anything else that you currently eat. You're not gonna stop eating food and only drink smoothie. Does that make sense? And on that note, it doesn't really matter when you drink your smoothie, you can drink it in the morning, in the afternoon, or at night. However, I do recommend that people do it in the morning, maybe before breakfast, just because it's kind of a one and done. You drink your smoothie in the morning and then you never have to worry about it again until the next day. And so you're gonna do that every single day for a month. That is the 30 day green smoothie challenge. Why is it called a challenge? Well, because it's gonna require some effort. You're gonna to have to go to the store and buy some ingredients and make some smoothies and actually take the time to drink the smoothies and that by default is challenging. Now it's not that challenging because the smoothies are good. It's not gonna take that long to make the smoothies. That being said, it's still gonna be somewhat of a challenge, hence the word challenge. Some extra emphasis should also be put on the fact that these smoothies are homemade and not bottled. In my opinion, bottled smoothies suck. There's just all kinds of funny business in store-bought bottled smoothies. And I'm gonna advocate for doing it yourself because then you're gonna know exactly what goes in it and you're gonna be certain that the benefits are gonna be maximized. On the other hand, if you buy a smoothie at a store, if it's not freshly blended in your presence, there's a lot of room for additives, preservatives, and all kinds of other stuff, which vastly, vastly, vastly diminishes its nutritional content. And thus, you're not gonna benefit as much. So, if you start this challenge, you're not allowed to cheat, you're not allowed to go every other couple days and buy a smoothie from the store, that doesn't count. That's a day wasted and you have to jump back to the previous day in order for it to work. When I make a green smoothie, especially in the beginning stages, I tend to use a lot of fruit. And I do this strategically because obviously fruit has benefit in it. There's all kinds of antioxidants and nutrients in fruit, but also it cuts the taste of the greens. And this is very important. 
because when a smoothie tastes good, I'm much more likely to drink it. And I mean, it's been decades now and the results are the same every single time. When a smoothie tastes good, I drink it. When a smoothie tastes bad, I don't want to drink it and it rots in my fridge. And so as an incentive to help you get through the challenge, I put a little bit more fruit in my smoothies so that you enjoy them and you look forward to them. And often this becomes a hot topic because in this modern age, we've all been taught to fear fruit and fruit sugar. And so people are constantly saying, Sergey, there's a lot of fruit. What do, we, what do you do? What do you recommend? To which I reply, you don't have to fear fruit sugar. Fruit sugar does not affect your body in the same way. I know that people are going to argue this, but I've looked into the science and it's just simply not the case. If you eat a cookie versus, you know, an apple, it's going to affect your body differently. An apple has the fiber intact. An apple has water in it. An apple has other nutrients that slow the absorption of sugar. And so in a smoothie, when you're blending everything whole with the fiber present, it's not really an issue. So when you go into this, if you're one of those folks that are afraid of sugar, just trust me on this. Try it for a month, see how you feel, and if you don't like it, then you can adjust and adapt. Maybe use fruit with low glycemic index, uh, but I promise you it's not a big issue. And since we're kind of talking about perfection and trying to be better, I also want to urge you to be cautious in that department because in my own life I find that every time I strive to be too perfect too fast, I set unrealistic expectations for myself and then I'm more likely to fail. You know, so when I tell myself I'm going to drink an extra green smoothie, you know, twice a day, then I end up z drinking zero green smoothie zero times a day. And I believe I have a clip somewhere where I can demonstrate what Sergey's perfection looks like. So let's roll that clip now. Check it out. Here's a lesson in perfection or lack thereof. So in my fridge right now, I have a bunch of unfinished smoothies. And the reason they're unfinished is because I try to take a shortcut. I try to cheat the system and I try to add too many greens in them because everybody knows that greens are good for you. People are scared of fruit. And so as a result, I made smoothies that don't taste good. I wasn't excited to drink them, thus half of them are still here. So I wasted a bunch of ingredients, I wasted a bunch of time, and I didn't benefit from them. And I bring this up because it's a very valid point. You know, often we like to be extreme, we like to be perfect too fast. And if we rush the process, this kind of thing happens. We don't actually reap any of the reward. And I am not immune to this. I'm just like everybody else. Look, I've been on a green smoothie challenge for like two decades, and yet this still happens to me, you know? So don't be extreme. Just take it day by day, enjoy the process, and know that when you mix fruits with greens in a smoothie, you're doing your body good. Even if your mind says that you're not, you actually are. While we're talking about smoothies and their buildup, it's also important to mention that rotating your greens is essential. You know, since green smoothies were conceptualized, people have found every which way to do it right and every which way to do it wrong. And today, one of the biggest criticisms of green smoothies as well as greens is that they can give you kidney stones or lead to alkaloid poisoning. And the reason these concerns exist is simply because people took one recipe or one green and they started eating it every single day in and out without rotation. So they stopped varying their diet and this is bad. And I'll be the first to admit that. Greens, just like everything else, have built-in survival mechanisms in them. These survival mechanisms are called alkaloids or oxalates, you know, they have other names, but essentially they're trace amounts of toxins. You know, kale wants you to eat a little bit of it, but it doesn't want you to eat every kale leaf that you see. And so kale has trace amounts of bad stuff in it, so that at a certain point if you eat too much kale, your body's going to give you some signals that, hey, maybe you should cut off the kale, maybe you should switch to a different green. 
And so then when you switch to say spinach, you can eat spinach for a while, at which point spinach with its oxalates is gonna give you that same message, please eat something else. And so if you rotate your greens, if you eat lettuce and then kale and then spinach and then something else and then something else, alkaloid poisoning will never be an issue. You'll never get kidney stones. You'll never get any sort of negative health effects. And that's ultimately what we all want, right? We're doing this challenge for the health benefits and we don't want anything negative. So I believe that a true smoothie connoisseur is diligent. He or she does his research. And as part of that research, it's important to rotate your greens. Obviously, as somebody who's promoting smoothies in a video and both in book form, I don't want anybody to get hurt doing this. I don't want any ill effect. I want you to reap maximum benefit and feel incredible. And so it is my responsibility every time I make one of these challenges to talk about the importance of eating a varied diet. It's extremely important. In fact, if we live closer to nature, we wouldn't even have the opportunity to eat spinach all day, every day, because we have something called seasons and eventually spinach would go out of season and you, you would be naturally forced to take a break and eat something else. But because we have Costco and we have Safeway and we have planes and trucks that carry produce every which way, we now have the opportunity to eat the same thing day after day after day and that can be problematic. So this is just a really long way of saying that if you rotate your greens, if you rotate the ingredients that go in your smoothies, alkaloid or oxalate poisoning is going to be a non-issue. It's not really even going to be something that you need to think about. You'll never have any sort of negative ramifications from it. And it's as simple as just changing up what you put in your smoothies. For the scope of the 30 day green smoothie challenge, rotating greens is not something that you have to think about. I've already built it into the challenge. So it's already done. You don't have to worry about it. Some days we're going to be using one green, then we're going to move to the next and so on and so forth. The reason I'm really bringing this up here now is because if you decide to go and drink smoothies on your own once the challenge is done, just kind of put that on the back burner and know that it's not good to only drink kale smoothies. It's not good to only drink kale uh, spinach smoothies. It's not good to only do lettuce. Variety is the spice of life. So this challenge specifically, it uses more frozen fruit than previous challenges. And we use more frozen fruit this time around because it's a lot easier to buy in bulk and it's a lot quicker to prepare. Frozen fruit is already, it's done. You don't need to prep anything. You don't need to peel anything. You don't need to pit anything. So that's gonna help us save a lot of time. I predict that because I use more frozen fruit, people are gonna pose the question, how does it compare nutritionally? So is frozen fruit inferior to fresh fruit on a nutritional level? And to answer that question, unfortunately, I'm gonna be a little bit vague. In looking into this matter, I found research that suggests that when fruit is frozen, its nutrition diminishes between five and 48%. So those figures are a little bit discouraging. On the other hand, some other research suggests that when fruit is frozen, for example, it's harvested at peak ripeness, i.e. peak nutrition. And so because it's harvested at that time, there's actually more nutrition in frozen fruit versus traditional store-bought fruit. Because traditionally, the fruit that you get in a store was likely grown elsewhere, maybe in a tropical country. And so then it was picked unripe, trucked and flown over to your where you buy it, and then this, the nutrition in it is drastically diminished. This is all to say that it's kind of a wash. I think it sort of balances out. If you use frozen fruit, it's gonna have diminished nutritional value, but it was harvested at a time when it would typically have more, versus when you use fresh fruit, it might look fresh, but it was harvested green and maybe didn't mature and to be um, the most nutritious that it could be. All that aside, I've been messing with smoothies for a really long time. I've used fresh fruit and frozen fruit, and it appears from the side that the nutrition and benefits that people reap are unaffected. And so I have no qualms with doing more frozen fruit this time around. I still think that it's gonna be immensely beneficial 
for the people engaging in this type of challenge. Another thing that people often wonder about is how or when they should intake their smoothies. And to that I reply, it really doesn't matter. So we've had retreats, we've had studies where people either drink their smoothies all at once or sip it throughout the day or drink it right before bed. And the effects that happen on the body seem to be the same either way. I'll give you an example. In 2013, I was working on a documentary slash pilot study called Powered by Green Smoothies. Uh, my team that I assembled of medical professionals, we gathered together 10 endurance athletes and we added smoothies to their diet just to see how it would affect their endurance, how it, it would affect their health. We put them through a bunch of crazy tests, blood tests. <laughs> we actually took about a quart of blood from them over the span of the, the experiment. We put them through urine analysis, we put them through oxidative stress tests, and then we added smoothies to their routines and followed them along. And some of these people, they drank their smoothies first thing in the morning. Some of these people, they sipped their smoothies throughout the day, and the results were overwhelmingly positive, and it didn't really seem to affect them one way or the next. So if you have a question about when you should drink your smoothies, my answer to that is simple, just drink it in any way that it's convenient for you. More importantly than how and when to drink your smoothies is for you to not forget to chew your smoothies. So don't forget to chew your smoothies. This is incredibly important because digestion starts in your mouth and the act of blending is kind of unnatural. It's something that we humans created it does add to the convenience because you're essentially liquefying huge salads and putting them in a smaller container and it's making it easier to intake, but you still have to masticate your food. So do whatever you have to, swish it around in your mouth, mix your smoothie with saliva, don't chug it straight because it could lead to some indigestion, you might get bloated, you might have some gas. And so for best results, chew your smoothies. Pretend like they're a solid food. And if you want to check out the pilot study that I mentioned, uh, the movie's called Powered by Green Smoothies, and it's available in numerous places online to watch. Unlike previous versions of this challenge, uh, we're going to be batch blending our smoothies. So instead of blending a smoothie every single day, we're going to save time by blending smoothie every other day, and we're going to make enough for two days so that every time we blend, we have two days worth, and that's gonna cut our prep time in half. So whereas before we had to make 30 smoothies on 30 different days, we're gonna make 15 smoothies 15 times, and it's gonna be enough for the whole month. All right, we did it. We cruised through part one. We learned some good stuff, hopefully, some stuff that'll help us stay safe and make better smoothies. And now it's time to move to part two where we're actually gonna blend the smoothies, we're gonna chop up some ingredients, we're gonna hit some buttons on our Vitamix, and we're gonna ultimately drink some delicious green drinks and feel better for it. So let's not dilly-dally, let's hop downstairs into my kitchen and start making some smoothies, let's go! Feast your eyes, in front of you, you see all of the ingredients that comprise the 30 day green smoothie challenge down to the last avocado. This is everything. We have our greens, we have our dates, we have our frozen fruit, as well as our fresh fruit. Most of these ingredients were acquired by yours truly from Costco Wholesale here in the US. And I advocate for shopping at Costco because they have a big organic selection. Their produce quality is very high and their prices are very low. So for example, had I bought all of these ingredients from a health food store, I would have easily, easily, easily spent two or three times as much. But because I shopped at Costco, I saved myself a few hundred bucks. So if there is a Costco in your area, it's worth looking into. P.S. I'm not sponsored by Costco. If you're a viewer watching from abroad where such a big box store does not exist, don't fret. I'm sure that there is an equivalent option at your disposal whether that be a farmer's market or a fruit stand or some other option altogether. This is all to say that I think it's worthwhile to do your due diligence, do a little bit of research, go to a few different stores or shops to figure out where you can buy high quality produce for less 
because as you can see, we're gonna be pulverizing lots and lots of different things and it's worth saving a little bit of money while you're at it. Now at this point, we're almost ready to begin, but before we do, I wanna quickly give you a close-up tour of everything that's on the table. And I'm gonna do that right now. Let's start left to right, shall we? So over here we got baby spinach, one pound. Then we have power greens. That's baby chard, baby spinach, baby kale. After that, we have some beautiful loose greens. We got um, green kale right there, and dinosaur kale, which I lovingly call dino kale. It's also sometimes called Italian kale. So we got a big bowl of kale. Then we have things like parsley. That's gonna be absolutely divine in a smoothie. We have red leaf lettuce. Check out that monstrous bunch. From here on out, every time I say a big bunch of greens, what I mean is the biggest, most monstrous bunch of greens that you can find. So please note that. After that, we have avocados, nice and ripe, a little bit of, a little bit soft to the touch. We got oranges, we got these green can cotton candy grapes. And these are things that I only learned about recently. They taste absolutely delicious. Yes, they have a slight aftertaste of cotton candy, and they're really good, just fresh, raw, or thrown in a smoothie. So if you have access to those, look for those. Otherwise, any sweet grapes will do. Then we have a few different types of pears, Bosch pears, red pears, green pears. We also have a few different types of apples, and it doesn't really matter which type of apples you use, so long as they are ripe and sweet because if they are ripe and sweet, if your ingredients are delicious, your smoothies will be delicious. And that's our main objective. Mmm, bananas. They're a little bit greener than I like, but that's the ingredients that I'm working with in the Pacific Northwest today. So I can't really complain. We got a pineapple straight from Costa Rica. This pineapple's traveled more than I have recently. We have some fresh basil from the garden. This is gonna be a real treat for me. I wish you could be here to share it with me, but it's 2020, we're in quarantine, so you're gonna to have to grow your own. Behind there we have organic sweet cherries, frozen and pitted. We have triple berry mix, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. Then we also have frozen mango chunks. And last but not least, we have medjool dates that have not been pitted. We're gonna have to remove the pits. And we have organic baby green mix. There you have it. There's your whirlwind tour. So now, let's stop dilly-dallying and let's blend some smoothies. We finally made it to the kitchen, and it's high time that we start making some smoothies. But, there is some housekeeping. There always is housekeeping, right? Let's quickly run through this, and then we'll hop right in and start blending. Point number one that I wanna make is that for the scope of this new challenge, we are gonna be batch blending our smoothies. And this is just a fancy way of saying we're gonna be making two smoothies every time we set up our blender to save time. This is called the 30 day smoothie challenge for busy people. Busy people don't have time to make a smoothie every single day. And so by batch blending, we're gonna cut our food prep in half. We're gonna cut our you know, chopping in half. We're literally gonna cut our chopping in half. And we're also gonna cut cleanup in half. So that is gonna be a wonderful thing. As we go along, I'm gonna try very hard to balance knowledge and make it as quick as possible. I don't want to dilly-dally too long because I don't want this video to be five hours long. So I'm going to try to feed you guys tips and tricks, things that I think are important to know, but I'm going to try and do that concisely. That is going to be a challenge for me. <laughs> 
So let's start by first addressing my blender. For this challenge, I will be using the Vitamix A3500. This is an Ascent Series Vitamix in a beautiful copper color. And it looks oh so nice. It's so sexy. The reason that I choose a Vitamix is because they're hands down the best blenders that I've ever worked with. And you don't have to have the A3500 or any other specific model because all of their blenders rock. So you could choose to get a really fancy one just like this. You can also choose a refurbished model which sells for roughly 279 bucks. It doesn't matter what you choose, all of their blenders are awesome. And I don't say that lightly. I've been choosing these blenders for 25 years. I've tried an extensive amount of other blenders on the market. Things like Blendtec blenders, KitchenAids, Osterizers, Ninjas, and every other gimmicky blender that I could get my hands on. Because in the beginning of all this, I wanted to find a low cost alternative. And after spending thousands of dollars, I basically went full circle and came right back to the Vitamix because, you know, it's quite expensive to keep buying cheap blenders that burn out and that don't blend nearly as good. I mean, some of this stuff looks good, but it's pretty much garbage. If you spend 70 bucks on this blender, you're gonna burn it out on a smoothie your first two or three smoothies, and then you're gonna have to buy four more of the same blenders. So there's a Vitamix right there. It's actually a lot cheaper to just invest from the get-go into one of these puppies, and then you'll be a happy camper for the rest of your life. That's probably the last blender that you'll have to buy. So what do you do with that information? I am by no means implying that you need a Vitamix blender to do this with me. You can use whatever blender that you have on hand, but if you're looking to upgrade and you're looking for a killer blender, any Vitamix you get is going to be that killer blender. So that being said, let's just hop in and start. In the first smoothie, we're going to be working with baby greens, dates, frozen cherries, bananas, and pear, a little bit of water. And it's not anything crazy. We're actually going to just dump our greens in the blender, just like that. Then we're gonna do two cups of frozen cherries. We're also gonna put some dates in, four to be precise. And you wanna be very careful and pick the pits out because you don't wanna break your teeth. Though if you're working with the Vitamix, this thing will actually blend those pits. Not that I recommend that you blend pits, but if you happen to accidentally throw one in, it will get pulverized. We're gonna do two bananas, just like so. And we're gonna do one pear. I have a knife right over here. Whenever I blend my smoothies, when I'm working with apples and pears, apple and pear seeds, they have trace amounts of amygdalin, which releases cyanide in the body when digested. A lot of people freak out about this. They're like, oh, cyanide's bad, it's gonna kill me. And so they core their pear before throwing it into their smoothies, just like that, right? I'm one of those weird people that leaves the seeds in because I've been taught that apple and pear seeds, when you just get them in small amounts, those trace amounts of cyanide or amygdalin, they actually explode cancer cells. So. I never pull them out. You can pull them out. It's, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. I will say that in order to be poisoned by apple or pear seeds, you have to eat a massive amount of apples. Like we're talking like two buckets of apples. So there really isn't any ill effect from those trace amounts of amygdalin. We're also gonna do a quart of water and we blend. Now, if you're working with the Vitamix for the very first time, you wanna make sure that the lid is sealed tightly. These blenders have a lot of power in them, and if you don't seal the lid, your smoothie has the great potential of exploding onto your ceiling. So, be very careful and seal the lid. Then this blender right here has an on and off switch. 
you're gonna switch that to on. You have your choice of pre-programmed settings. You know, if you're new and you just wanna set it and forget it, you can press the smoothie setting and it'll just spend 50 seconds doing its thing. Just like so. Or if you're like me and you feel like you know better than the machine, then you can just hit start and adjust it on your own free will. Once your smoothie is nice and smooth, what you're gonna do is you're gonna try it to make sure that it tastes good. Because if your smoothie doesn't taste good, you're not gonna drink it. And if you're not gonna drink it, you're not gonna benefit accordingly. So you might as well just make it taste good. So that's Sergey's rule number one. Make sure it tastes good before you drink it yourself or feed it to others. And it tastes good. So at this point, you're gonna get your two quart jars, one for today and one for tomorrow. And you're gonna fill them up. Just like so. And any remainder that's left, this is called the nibble. You give this to your friends, to your kids, to your picky eating husband or wife, and hopefully this will entice them to do the green smoothie challenge with you. So that's what you do. At this point, we are done making smoothie for today. You are gonna drink one of these today. This, this is your mission for the day. And then tomorrow, you're gonna drink this one. So it's as easy as that. And yet it's still a challenge. And no, you don't have to stop eating other food. This is something that I can't stress enough because over and over again, despite how many disclaimers I make in these videos, as well as in the ebook, People still ask me all the time, they say, is the 30 day green smoothie challenge exclusively smoothies or can I eat other food? And the answer is, of course, you can eat other food. You just have to drink this in addition to whatever else you're doing. With day one and two behind us, it's time to make some more smoothie. This is day three and four. This smoothie is gonna be just like the last smoothie we made, except totally different. We're gonna use a few slightly different ingredients. Instead of cherries, I'm gonna be using frozen mango. Instead of green pear, I'm gonna be using a Bosch pear. And why? Because I can. And reason number two is because it really doesn't matter what you put into a green smoothie. So long as the ingredients are fresh and ripe and delicious, basically if you balance sweet fibrous fruit with ripe greens, you're, you're sure to make a delicious smoothie every single time. We are gonna first start by throwing our greens in the blender, just like so. This is one third pound of baby greens. And how do you know it's a third? Well, because I bought a pound of baby greens and I roughly took a third and I threw that third in the blender. After that, we are gonna carefully pit our dates so as not to get these pits in the blender. In fact, when you have your pits, throw them in the sink, make sure that they're not around. This is three cups of frozen mango. In they go. We got our pear. Once again, I'm gonna leave the seeds intact because it's a different day. And I need my cancer cell exploding amygdalin. There's actually a Wired article written about cyanide and amygdalin and apple seeds circa 2016. And they basically found that that was a myth a wives tale that if you eat apple seeds, you're gonna harm your body. They also came to the conclusion that you have to eat a massive amount of apple seeds in order to feel any sort of ill effect. So 
If you don't believe me, you might believe Wired. You might believe Wired magazine. Two bananas. Boom. And last but not least, we are gonna do one quart or liter if you're in Europe of water. And look at that. Doesn't that look really nice? So we got our greens on the bottom, we got our water and our fruit on top. At this point, we are gonna hit blend. So this smoothie I blended for exactly 57 seconds. If you're using a Vitamix, you know, a minute is generally enough. If you're using another blender, I would go two or three minutes because you want your smoothies cream and silky. They are much more pleasant to drink when they are creamy versus chunky or anything else. And will you look at that and see if it's silky. Oh yeah, like velvet. I almost forgot my own rule. You always wanna try your smoothie first before you know, making sure that it's done. Cause right now at this point, you can still dump it back, fix anything that needs fixing and ensure that it's gonna be good, that you're gonna to wanna to drink it. So it's even better than yesterday. You're gonna pour your two quarts. You're gonna pour your nibble. And then you're gonna seal it up. Just like so. And now you have a new challenge to drink one of these today, that's day three, and one of these tomorrow, that's day four. And we're back. Day five and six are upon us. And today we are working with some other ingredients that we haven't seen thus far. So in today's smoothie, we got more baby greens. This is the last third of our pound of baby greens. We've got some frozen berries, orange, apple, dates, and banana. Here we go. So by now, you know the drill. I like to put my greens in the blender first, that way, you don't get situations like this, where a leaf of greens just gets stuck in between the, the lid and the carafe, and they just blend up a lot better. So that is a preference that I make for my own personal smoothies. You can choose your greens, you can choose to put your greens on top. It really doesn't matter. It's all gonna get blended. Then we're gonna do two cups of frozen berries just like so. Once again, we're gonna pit our dates very carefully. And if it's starting to feel a little bit like Groundhog's Day, it's because it is a little bit. You're working with some of the same ingredients, but don't you worry. These ingredients are full of vital vitamins and minerals, and they're gonna do your body good. Let's peel the orange. You can also cut it, but I like to peel mine. It's a very fragrant orange. Kind of pull out any bits that aren't desirable to you personally. Throw everything in the blender. Same is true for the bananas, peel them. One of my friends that was doing the last green smoothie challenge, he decided to freeze all his bananas because he bought them all at the same time. And he was kind of new to this whole smoothie thing. He ended up freezing all his bananas <laughs> with the peel. And it's very hard to, fe uh, to peel a frozen banana. So he just blended his bananas with the peel. <laughs> He said he liked it, so it's not my place to judge. But I did get quite a good chuckle out of it. 
And last but not least, we got water. Some people like their smoothies very thick. Some people like them more like juice. I always use about a quart of water in my smoothies. That's kind of the consistency that I prefer. If you want your smoothies a little bit more like pudding, add less water. If you want them more like juice, add more water. So really, this is just a guide. It's not an exact science, and you have the power to tweak, and I very much encourage that. Here we go. That looks like it's smooth. So far, this is kind of a rainbow smoothie challenge. The first smoothie was kind of peach, then we had a proper green smoothie, and this one is kind of purple. All right, let's see if it tastes good. And it does. So we're gonna pour our two quarts. Then we're gonna pour our nibble. Oh, it's a big nibble this time. Look, this is a generous pour. So if you want to give this to a coworker or to one of your kids or whatever, this is half of your daily allowance of green smoothie right there. See these suckers up. And now you have today's smoothie and tomorrow's smoothie ready to go. You have no excuse. You have to drink this one today, that one tomorrow, and it's as easy as that health one jar at a time. Day seven and eight are here. And if you made it this far, big high five to you. That's no easy feat. Even though this challenge is relatively simple, you're just drinking a jar of smoothie every single day, it takes some gumption, and I'm very proud of you. Let's not dilly-dally, let's hop right in. In today's smoothie, we have blended through all of our baby greens, so we are now switching to red leaf lettuce. And red leaf lettuce, some people would never think to use that in a smoothie, but it's quite delicious, and it's quite nutritious. You don't have to chop it up too finely because it's all gonna get pulverized. In it goes. Kind of shake off any of the water, even though it doesn't really matter, I guess, because we're gonna be adding more water to it, like now-ish. Quart of water goes in. We're also gonna be parsley bombing this smoothie. So with my green smoothies, often I like to give it a little bit more oomph and the best way to do that is to add an herb. Now this could be basil. Basil is exceptionally tasty in green smoothies. It could also be things like parsley or cilantro. My floor is creaky, it's gonna drive me nuts, but we're gonna do this on the first take. So parsley is very nutritious and you might not think to put it in a green smoothie, but you should think it because it's incredibly delicious. And it goes. This smoothie's been parsley bombed. We have more pear. And I'm not gonna tell you what I think about pear seeds because by now you already know. So, thank goodness for that. Sergey is learning how to become quick and efficient. Once again, we're gonna throw the dates in with no pits. I think I just complimented myself and then I undid it shortly thereafter by talking about dates, regurgitating that information. But, you know, maybe for some of us, repetition will be helpful. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself here and now. Two more bananas. In they go. 
Here's a fun little fact about bananas. When a banana is totally ripe, you can split it in threes just by putting your finger through the middle of it. So all fruit can be eaten without utensils. And this right here, if you ever go to dehydrate bananas, that's the best way to quarter them, to, to put them in thirds to make nice little bite-sized pieces. So that's a fun little trick. In you go, banana. And we have our two cups of frozen mangoes. Let me just rinse my hands. Alrighty, let's blend. So seal the lid, give it a nice push, and let's try the smoothie setting. Why not? Maybe the blender knows better than me. Vitamix. Let's see how well you've perfected your smoothie presets. The suspense. It's pretty darn smooth. Good job. So the preset smoothie on this A3500 is A-OK. -okay. Your smoothies are done. And you even have a little bit more to spare. All right, you know the drill. Seal them up and get on with your day. Perhaps now is a good time to mention that it really doesn't matter how or when you ingest your smoothies. Some people sip on them throughout the day just casually sipping on their green smoothie jar. Other people drink it first thing in the morning before breakfast. Uh, in my research, and I have actually done research that's outside of Googling stuff, in my research, it really doesn't matter how you drink it. The benefits are exactly the same. And I know this firsthand because in 2013, I was working on a film called Powered by Green Smoothies. You can watch it for free on YouTube. And in that movie, I put a bunch of endurance athletes on smoothies just to see how it would affect them. And they drank it every which way that you could think of and all of them reaped the rewards except for one person, and I'm not gonna spoil it for you. You can go and watch the movie and see what happened to him. And, 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 just because it's a smoothie doesn't mean that you have to not chew it. Uh, digestion starts in your mouth, and so you wanna masticate everything that you, that you eat, including your smoothies. So, you know, if nobody's watching, even better, you're not gonna embarrass yourself, but when you're drinking your smoothie, make sure to mix it with your saliva. That is gonna ensure that it digests properly. And so on that note, I'm gonna leave you for today with two more smoothies to drink. Now we're gonna blend smoothies nine and 10. This is the next segment in the smoothie challenge. And after we're done drinking these smoothies, we are gonna be one third of the way through the smoothie challenge. So let's hop to it. Today we're gonna be using more parsley. This is the second half of the bunch that 
we started using a few days ago. How I've thought about this challenge, how I've arranged it, is that we use all the tender, perishable ingredients first, like the baby greens at the beginning of this segment, and then we save the more, uh, the, the produce that preserve better for later on in the block. And parsley is one of those ingredients that lasts a very long time when refrigerated. So into the blender it goes. I'm not even gonna bother ripping up the lettuce because this thing can liquefy a wooden block. So why would it have a hard time blending lettuce? I have no idea. Then we're gonna do our frozen berries. Triple berry mix again. Raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries. We have more dates. I love dates. We got more pear. I'm feeling sassy today. That's why I'm kind of like chucking all my ingredients around. I don't know what it is. I just don't know. Maybe it's the fact that nobody else is here. I'm doing this alone in my kitchen. And I miss people. We got some orange. You know, it's funny because in the modern world, when we're making YouTube videos, when I'm making YouTube videos, some of those videos go out to reach hundreds of thousands of people, and yet when I produce them, I'm all alone and completely separated, and that's just not easy to get used to. I don't, you know, I don't really have anything to say about that because I haven't really figured out what to say about that. Give it a good old smush. Put some water on top. And let's blend. Once again, we have a smoothie that's not green. This is a purple smoothie. And the reason that it's a purple smoothie is because of the berries. Some pigments are stronger than others, and blue and purple pigment is an example of that. So it doesn't matter what kind of greens I was gonna put in this, because it has quite a lot of berries in it, it will always turn pink or purple or some other shade of those colors. Let's try this just to make sure it's good. And it is. Now we're gonna seal it up. Get after it. Here, this is for you. One today, one tomorrow, do it. Day 11, 12 are upon us, and that means that we are in a new block. So how I've organized this new 30 day green smoothie challenge for busy people is that I urge you to go shopping just three times. So roughly every 10 days you take a shopping trip. Because we shop infrequently, because that saves you time, we kind of have to prioritize our greens. This is a little bit of a repeat from what I've said earlier, but for the next three blending sessions, we're gonna work with baby spinach because in this block, it's the most tender green and thus it's gonna perish the quickest. So for the next three times that we blend, you're gonna see a lot of spinach. After that, we're gonna to switch to a different green and we do this because that other green keeps much better and thus it's the smart thing to do. So for today's recipe, we are gonna be working with baby spinach. This is one third of a pound. Again, this is 
a pound container and I roughly pulled one third of it out. And now I'm putting it in the blender. You know, you can go, if you want more greens, you can certainly add more, but this is a good jumping off point, especially for beginner smoothie makers. We also have more frozen cherries. In they go. Another orange. I just have dad jokes in my mind that I'm keeping to myself. Again, you want to pull out any bits that you might not want blended. For me, that pretty much just means the peel. I leave everything else intact. You know, if oranges are very seedy, like this is a navel orange, so there's not too many seeds in it. But if I was working with Valencia's or maybe some mandarins, I would probably pull the citrus seeds out as they tend to make a whole pitcher of smoothie bitter. But like I said, because this orange doesn't have too many seeds, I don't need to worry about that. No dates today, but we will work with two more bananas. If you've been paying attention, then by now you're recognizing that bananas are sort of staple in a green smoothie. They just kind of make everything creamy and delicious. And we're also working with an apple. Smush it down, pour water over it. And we blend. That looks about right. I seriously do taste every single smoothie I make because I don't think it's right for a bad smoothie to give all of smoothies a bad name. So I just, I wanna ensure that people enjoy it, that I enjoy it, and so I taste all my smoothies. And this is another winner. And that took almost no time at all. If I wasn't rambling, it would have taken even less time. You got your two quarts. You can hear my cat in the background. She's a Siamese cat, and they're very, very vocal. Okay, you know the drill. Here's two more, 11, 12. In these two smoothies, we're gonna mix it up just a smidge. Instead of two bananas, we're gonna be working with an avocado. And that's probably a good place to tell you that since we're only gonna be using half an avocado, here's a trick to storing the other half. So when you cut it in half, the half that has the pin in it, that's the one you're gonna store. You're gonna put it in a bag, stick it in the refrigerator, and because you leave the pit in the avocado, that pit is gonna help preserve the rest of the avocado from oxidizing, from turning black. So that's kind of a cool little tip or trick. And then we're gonna end up using this bit for our smoothie today. So let us begin. We're gonna do half an avocado, skin removed. Into the blender you go. After that, let's do our greens. One third pound spinach, just like last time. And then we're gonna do frozen mangoes. And we are cruising. One banana. Mixing it up, literally. One apple. Any apple that's sweet and delicious will do. And it's in this case right now, oops, this is a gala. No problem, we've got a sink right here. 
So one gala apple and water. And we blend. that goodness this is textbook green smoothie right here it's green and it's a smoothie that qualifies it to be a green smoothie and we don't have too much of a nibble so maybe during this recipe set you don't share much of your smoothie all right folks cheers to health this one's today this one's tomorrow Here's another milestone. We're at days 15 and 16, which means that half the challenge is already done. Mm, mm, mm. More digital high fives. Here you go. Uh, uh, uh. Let's hop right in. Today we're mixing stuff up because instead of four medjool dates, we're only using three. <laughs> okay, so this challenge is super duper simple and maybe a little bit repetitive but we have to make sacrifices. It's either really convenient and really easy or really diverse and a little bit more complicated. So if you're really busy, this is the challenge for you. If you're getting to this point and you're thinking, man, I want more variety, then you might as well check out my 30 day green smoothie challenge. It's also on the internet. You can find it just about everywhere, but you're halfway through this one. So you might as well finish this challenge and then for month number two, we're going to do that challenge. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do it differently today. We're going to blend the orange first because I was worried that if I grabbed the spinach, the orange would roll off the counter. And so I made an executive decision. Peel the orange. I'm just gonna narrate everything I do. This peel is kind of hard to peel. The previous oranges made me look good. This difficult orange makes me look less professional. Maybe I never looked professional to begin with. I'm okay with that. You're gonna take the last third pound of spinach and you're gonna gently Caress it into your Vitamix container or any other blender of your choosing. Then you're going to keep putting spinach, all the little loose guys, into the container as well. Might as well throw the water in next since it's right there close at hand. Dates. We don't do pits on our dates. Okay, okay I'll stop. I'll stop. Bonk. Remember this guy? So this is the second half to our avocado that we used in the previous section. It's got the pit still intact, so it shouldn't have oxidized very much. You know, I'm kind of filming these back to back, so your avocado might look slightly more brown, but I assure you it's still good to eat. And so at this point, we are gonna do that. Slice that sucker in half, peel it and throw it in the blender. Following that, we are gonna do our mixed berries, frozen of course. Then we're gonna lick our fingers because that gets them clean. Throw an apple in after that. And last but not least, the banana. I think we're there. Let's do this. And 
then just like that, we have another delicious smoothie. Boom. Bam. And a little bit extra. Two more down the hatch. Well, we finally made it to kale. In my humble opinion, kale has gotten way too much recognition in this game of green smoothies. And so I decided to take the spotlight off kale in this challenge, kind of shove it in towards the middle and that's what I did. And with all greens that have fibrous stems, I like to take the greens off the stem and it's literally as easy as just doing that. And so we're gonna do that to our green kale. You don't have to do this with greens that have tender stems. I mean, you don't have to do this period. This is just kind of a personal preference. So, take it or leave it. The choice is yours. So we're going to quickly process all of our kale. And it's quite wet still from when I washed it, so things are going to get moist. If you have a juicer, you can juice these stems and then no part will be wasted. You can also blend up a green smoothie for your plants using these kale stems. So you just make, you know, green smoothie with all these little bits. And the nice thing about a plant green smoothie is it doesn't have to taste good. It's basically like a compost smoothie. And then you'll pour that compost smoothie a little bit away from the roots so as not to burn them. And your plants will love you and they'll grow much taller and get more tastier so that when you harvest them, you, my friends, will reap the reward. So that's one bunch of green kale. It literally fills the blender to the top, and then we smush it down, and now it's half full. Notice how I didn't say half empty. I'm an optimist. Then we are gonna basil bomb the crap out of the smoothie. I have half a bunch of basil, just like a parsley bomb, but with basil. We got more mango chunks. Another basil leaf. Sometimes you gotta bite into the orange for it to peel. Savage, huh? Into the blender you go. Let's do water next. We're really getting crazy this time. Instead of a green pear, we're using a red pear. And there's no particular reason other than showing my dear viewers that variety is fun and important. So in it goes. And I have yet to find a substitute for bananas other than, you know, extra mango or extra date. Alas, today I'm using a banana. Where'd the lid go? Here it is. Blend. Let's give it a try. Yum. The taste of the chlorophyll has been sufficiently cut by the fruit. 
you can almost taste zero kale. You can taste very little kale is how I should have said that. But instead, my tongue tied up and I said something completely different. Two more smoothies. Cheers. Day 19 and 20. Today we're working with more of the same stuff. And at this point, hopefully it's becoming routine. You know, we are almost two thirds of the way through the challenge. And I really sincerely hope that smoothies are becoming just something you do every day. Maybe, just maybe, you're even looking forward to them. Maybe they're leading to other healthier habits like dr drinking less coffee or craving healthier foods or maybe none of those things are true and you know you haven't noticed anything which is okay too the important thing is that you are massively supercharging your body with vitamins and minerals you're essentially eating huge bowls of salad in liquid form when you drink these smoothies and that's a beautiful thing. You got more stems for another plant smoothie if you want. Triple frozen berry mix down the hatch. Berries are loaded with antioxidants and those are really vital for good health. We have the second half of that bunch of basil. We're gonna basil bomb this smoothie just like we did last time. And we're still on the red pear kick. Let's not be savages today. Let's cut the orange instead of biting into it. and a little bit more banana. So as the challenge progresses, maybe you've noticed, maybe you haven't, but I'm at, starting to add a little bit less fruit because by this point, you know, you're more of an intermediate smoothie drinker. So you can start slowly increasing the amount of greens and decreasing the amount of fruit. Not to say that that is something that you have to do, but you know, I put in a couple little like secret things into this challenge, though it's not so secret now that I'm talking about it. And that is one of those things. We got some water. And we blend. be good so if you saw that if you caught it um, it wasn't blending and Vitamix blenders come with a little plastic plunger and the nice thing about the plunger is that it doesn't quite reach the blade so you can just plunge fearlessly knowing that you're not going to get a bunch of plastic into your smoothie I very rarely have to use this because the blades and the motor are powerful and sharp enough to just suck everything down and pulverize it but on the rare occasion that it needs a little bit of force, this is a very handy tool. All right, how do we do? Ooh. All right, still good. I still got it. 19 and 20 days in, I still got it. It's like I've tested these smoothies 
and crafted them perfectly for the green smoothie challenge. Mmm, delicious. I'm excited for this one. Cap it. And drink it. Oh, I'm gonna steal this lid because these big ones are more important. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you got two more smoothies to drink. Make me proud. Day 21 and 22 is here. And today we're working with two different types of frozen fruit. And when this happens, some people will need to add a little bit more water to help everything blend. Let's see how we go. We might have to do the same. Also in this batch of smoothies, we're working with power greens. This is a mix I got from Costco. There's spinach, there's kale, and there's chard in here. So that is a different type of green combination that we haven't used thus far. Frozen cherries go into the blender, as do the frozen mangoes. We have some grapes, and we want to kind of take out all the sticky parts, like the parts that are sticks, not the <laughs> sticky parts. <laughs> Sometimes I crack myself up. These are cotton candy grapes, and I'm new to these. I just discovered them for the first time this year and they're quite delicious and they taste a little bit like cotton candy and that tastes really nice in smoothies. Whatever grapes you choose to use in your smoothie at home is completely up to you. That said, you might want to look for these. Also a Costco find, though I have seen them at health food stores. So about two cups of grapes. Then we have our power greens, one third a pound, roughly a third of a bag. You can eyeball it. Smushy smush smush, and a banana. Boom. Let's see if this sucker will blend. I'm really digging this dial. You just, it's so smooth to adjust your speeds. Just Let's see what happened. And look, here's case in point. So a few smoothies ago, I said that I like to add my greens in first because if you add them in last, this kind of hap happens. So you get that rogue little green. So let's just go ahead and blend that again because nobody likes when their smoothie is pouring and then bloop, bloop, little bits start falling out. Okay, take two. Mmm, dang, that is good. Those cotton candy grapes really shine through. Mmm. This is a really good summery smoothie. I just made that up, but it's hot today, and this smoothie goes down extra smooth. And then we seal the deal. And just like that, we have two more smoothies, one for today, one for tomorrow. Let's do it.
Will you please look at this plumage? I mean, that is just straight gorgeous. It's glorious. I don't think I've ever seen a green part on a pineapple quite like that before. I'm gonna clear up some space because there's some things to talk about. We got our berry mix. That's gonna go in first. We're back to the avocado. And so, you know the drill. We're gonna use half of it now. Half in the next set of smoothies. And the half that we're gonna save is this half, the one with the pit in it. So we're gonna set that aside. And here's another way to easily get this into there. Just take a teaspoon and boom. Probably should have done that that way last time. Okay, take two on these as well. Remove the woody parts, the stems. Remove the stems, there we go, from the grapes. So the stems go in recycling or compost. Try and drop at least one grape on your kitchen floor. Then let's put our power greens in the blender. Just like so. We'll do the banana next. Finally, we have room to work. Let's uh, actually put the water in so we don't spill it. I would have for sure spilled that water. Okay, let's talk pineapple. So first things first, how do you choose a ripe one? Um, in North America, that can be quite challenging because they pick these suckers super unripe so that they can survive the journey over. This one's from Costa Rica. That's roughly, I don't know, 4,000 miles away from where I live. So this pineapple went on a journey. So the best that I can offer you is this. First, smell your pineapple. And if it smells sweet, like that traditional pineapple smell, that's a pretty good indication that it's ripe. You're also gonna kind of pinch it a little bit, make sure that there's a little bit of give. Not too much, but you also don't want it hard as a rock. And then if you wiggle on some of these leaves, like that one just came out, no problem. The easier that the leaves pop out, the better indication that the pineapple is ripe. This one is quite ripe. So, how do we process it? Well, first, you twist off the top. That's quite fun. And if you're into gardening, you can literally just um, propagate this. This will grow another pineapple plant. So you can save that if you like. So we're only gonna use a, a fraction of this pineapple in this smoothie, so let's just work with half of it. We're gonna cut it in half. And if you can see the center, the core, that's kind of the woody part. So we want to cut the skin off the pineapple and we also wanna cut around the woody part. So the easiest way that I've found to do that is first cut off both ends. Wow, this, this guy's quite ripe. That's good, I like it. And then you can just kind of fillet the skin off the pineapple. Just like so. And then you can cut around that woody stem. You can also blend the woody stem, there's no problem doing that. And sometimes I do, but for variety's sake, I'm gonna leave it out. And then you're gonna cut some chunks. I believe this recipe calls for about two cups of pineapple chunks. Am I gonna measure it? Probably not. Actually, definitely not. I'm gonna just pretend that this is two cups, roughly half a pineapple, because I know that next time we make a smoothie, I can use the other half. Wipe these mucky paws, and you guessed it, we're gonna blend. I 
am super digging this dial. It's just so smooth and buttery. The previous dials were more mechanical and they were fine, but this one's like, this one's like, a, feels kind of like the old iPod dial. I like it. Alas, I digress. We're making smoothies. Mmm. Holy moly. Mmm. This one might be good enough to take home to meet your mother. I'm serious. Mmm. You are gonna enjoy this smoothie, my friends. It is quite delicious. And if you use the tricks that I taught you about picking out a fresh, ripe pineapple, it's going to be even better. Yum Yummers. I am going to look forward to drinking this one and then this one. Cheers, guys. New day, new smoothie. Today we're finishing up our bag of power greens. We're also working with our pineapple, the half that we didn't use last time, as well as the half of our avo that we didn't use. Here we go. Vunk. Let's make some room. Back to the Bosch pair. Make sure you take the stickers off. Plastic does not complement any green smoothie whatsoever. That's part of the reason that we store our green smoothies in glass jars. Because glass is a nice vessel that's not porous, and so it's a clean vessel. When you store things in it, it doesn't matter if it gets hot or cold, the glass doesn't come off in little particles into your smoothie. So that's something to think about. When you're making your smoothies and storing them, preferably don't store them in plastic. It's just better all around. Next, let's do our mango chunks. You're more than welcome to use fresh mango in place of the frozen. I just have frozen on hand and that's what I'm going with. Um, where's our spoon? Here's our spoon. Half an avocado. We'll do one quart of water. And just in case you missed it last time, we're gonna do the other half of the pineapple in the same fashion. Lay the sides just like so. You know, you have to go deeper than you think because otherwise, you're going to have these little bits in your smoothie, which is all a matter of preference. They're not going to harm you in any way, but if you're not, if you want a nice, silky smoothie, best to get rid of all the woody and fibrous parts. And there goes our other half of the pineapple diving into the blender. Give it a nice firm smush. And we blend. probably going to cut out most of the blending because it's kind of annoying and what's the point of watching a blender blend for 40 to 60 seconds. But just to reiterate, when I do blend my smoothies, it's roughly in that minute range. So what you're not seeing is that the blender is running for 60 seconds. 
Again, if you don't have a powerful blender like a Vitamix, that might need to be extended to two or three minutes. Be your own judge, blend a smoothie until it's silky smooth. And you gotta give me credit, I'm keeping up with my own first rule. Mm, that is just divine. It's as good, if not better, than the previous one. So that's good. We got two more jugs ready to go. And a super duper full extra one that we're gonna give to a friend, a loved one, a neighbor. Here you go. Here's two more smoothies to drink. And this smoothie in particular, I'm gonna to dedicate to all my viewers because I am so proud of you for taking charge of your own health, taking it into your own hands. And so this one's for you. Cheers. Can you believe it? We got four smoothies left until the month long challenge is complete. So if you've made it this far, found it. Boom, 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 boom. Four smoothies left, that's nothing. We got this. In today's smoothie, we are working with dino kale or Italian kale. And as with the green kale, we're gonna take the stems off and for dino kale specifically, this is much easier to do with your hands. So you can just grab the bottom of the stem and slide. And then that's what's left. It just comes right off. Boom. And if you get like a nice little tender young leaf, you don't even need to destem it because there's nothing tough and fibrous about it. Then we have a knife, holstered. We're gonna chop up our pear and throw it in the blender. Is anybody sad that this is all coming to the end? What are we gonna do when it's all over? I don't know, you're gonna have to watch till the end and find out and water. Okay, I feel like, yeah, I think that we're there. There we go. good. We didn't have enough for a nibble this time. Alas, there's an extra. There we have it. And just like that, we reached the end. This is day 29 and 30. And before I get all sappy and say my goodbyes, I propose that we make the smoothie and then we'll get to all the other stuff. Sound good? Come on, let's roll. So over the course of this challenge, we've been using different ingredients, but we've also been keeping it pretty darn simple. About as simple as you can really get. And I hope that that has been testament to the fact that a good tasting smoothie doesn't have to be complicated. Sometimes less is more. Um, what else can I tell you?
There's probably going to be a call to action here shortly. Just brace yourself for that because I like to play tricks on people, but I like to play kind tricks on people. So if there is a call to action, it's probably going to be good for you. Okay, mangoes go in the blender. Banana, in you go. Let's make sure that our apples don't have tags. They don't appear to have tags. They go in whole. And last but not least, water. And we blend. Just like that, we're ending on a very good note, a proper green smoothie. Drum roll, please. Damn, that's good. Mmm, mm hmm. If I had to end it on one smoothie, it would probably be this one. You know how I know that's true? Because I'm ending it on this smoothie. Okay, my dears, so here's the deal. This challenge is over, but by now you should have created a really solid healthy habit and I don't really want you to stop. So if you found that these smoothies add to your life, maybe they give you more energy, maybe they help you feel better, by this point, you should have seen that it doesn't really take that much time out of your day to make them. And so my new challenge for you is to continue doing it. So make yourself a smoothie every single day and drink a jar of health every single day. And by this point, you've learned how to do it. You are a professional. So you can make your own smoothies. You can create your own combinations. You can just as easily hop back to the start of this challenge and start it all over again. Also, on the internet, I have other green smoothie challenges. I have at least two more that are on YouTube, as well as on Gaia TV, so you can check those out. And for those that don't want to watch, maybe want to read, I do have some green smoothie challenge ebooks, and those are available on my website, sergeybutenko.com. So, on that note, we're going to say our goodbyes, and I'm so grateful that you came and visited with me and that you did something super healthy for yourself. So drink this smoothie on day 29, drink this smoothie on day 30, and I'll catch you somewhere else at another time. Cheers. Mm. That is so freaking good. Mm. Here's a quick behind the scenes tour of 30 day green smoothie challenge for busy people 2020. So we're gonna be making our smoothies there on this beautiful Rose Vitamix A3500. I'm excited to work with that thing, it's new to me. Okay, down below we have a little hidden light that's gonna backlight our blender and ingredients a little bit. That's just a cheap Chinese light, but it works pretty well for its purposes. It's really easy to tuck away. We have a little twinkle lights for ambiance, like so, boom. Nice hipster plants are always desirable, right? Over here, we got a boom mic, so that if my lapel mic gets scratchy or something goes wrong, we have a backup. This is gonna be our close-up cam, right here. It's gonna film me chopping ingredients. This is our beast, our GH5 right here with a ring light. It's gonna hopefully make my eyes pop, we'll see. Then we have Frankenstein setup with all kinds of cords. 
We got a little backup lapel mic because like I said, two forms of audio are better than one. Like they say in Hollywood, if you've got one, you've got none. Oh, by the way, there's all our green smoothie jars. And then when we're done pouring them into the small jars, we're gonna put them in these bigger jars so that I can actually drink all the smoothie that I blend today over the course of, I don't know, a week. And I'm probably gonna share a bunch with my friends too. Then over here we got another light. This is the Lytra Studio. This is a super duper powerful light and it's literally gonna be blasting in that direction, making everything look good. Oh, but wait, there's more. Right behind me, here's some of the ingredients we will be blending. There's other ingredients too, but they're in the fridge, staying cool. And I may or may not set up a time lapse. I don't know if I need to complicate things to that extent. There you have it. There's your short little two minute preview.